Good morning and welcome back to the course of microwave engineering. So today we are going to discuss the further part of the transistor which uh, we left in our previous lecture. So if you recall in our previous lecture we started studying the semiconductor devices beginning with transistor device. So last time we saw the typical construction of field effect transistor which is especially metal semiconductor field effect transistor and then we saw the current controlled bipolar junction transistor as a device and then a special type of bipolar junction device we saw a special construction that is a heterojunction bipolar transistor. So the construction working principle of all these different types of transistors are completed in our previous lecture. So in today's lecture, we will move ahead and we will see the remaining type of transistor and we will start with the different types of diode. Right? So in our previous lecture, <coughs> we started with the microwave transistors and we covered bipolar junction transistor, heterojunction bipolar transistor and metal semiconductor field effect transistor. So we saw two different types of current controlled transistor that is BJT and HVT and we saw one of the type of field effect transistor that is a MOSFET. So today we will start with <coughs> studying the remaining type of field effect transistor which is again a specialized transistor which is similar to HVT but this is a field effect transistor right. So name of this particular transistor is high electron mobility transistor. And then we start with studying the different types of microwave diodes. So let us start discussing about high electron mobility transistor which is similar in the operation when it is compared to heterojunction bipolar transistor. But this is essentially a field effect transistor device. So here let us start with theoretical study of this high electron mobility transistor. So the short form we are going to call it as a HEMT. So it stands for high electron mobility transistor okay so let us go through this theoretically the high electron mobility transistor is a heterostructure field effect device okay so please remember here this particular device is same as that of the operation when it is compared to hbt device but the simple difference between this hemt and hbt is that the HBT was current controlled bipolar device while HEMT that is high electron mobility transistor is a field effect device. So hence this can be controlled by applying a voltage rather than a current. Okay? So this device is named HEMT because the structure takes the advantage of superior transport properties. Okay? So this is a very important statement again I will underline or uh, I will highlight this particular sentence. So here this statement, this device is named HMT because the structure of this transistor is going to take the advantage of superior transport properties. Okay? So the principal working of this particular transistor is based on the same phenomena. Okay? So this device is called as a high electron mobility transistor. So the name itself indicates that what is the actual peculiarity of processing or the operation that is taking place inside this transistor. So this transistor is known as high electron mobility transistor. So the name itself indicates that whatever the movement of charge carrier is taking place being as a field effect device, the charge carrier is because of the majority charge carrier depending upon what type of channel we are using whether P type or N type channel. So accordingly, the majority charge carrier will get improved velocities okay, or mobility. So the mobility of the charge carrier depending upon what type of channel it is built upon. So the mobility of the charge carrier is improved and it is further increased. So that's why the charge carriers, they are accessed with high electron mobility velocities. Okay, so the velocities of the charge carrier is improved and how the velocities of charge carrier is improved in the structure of this transistor. So this transistor is constructed in a such a way that whatever charge carriers are there, especially we are going to make use of N channel in where we will find majority charge carriers as an electrons. 
so the electrons will be supplied with additional velocity for their mobility the structure in a constructed in a such a way that the structure itself is going to provide increased mobility to the electrons so that's why the speed of propagation of electron inside this particular device becomes improved and increased and that's why faster switching operation can be obtained by using high electron mobility transistor so this is the crust or we can say this is the concept or principle of operation the structural construction of this particular transistor is made in a such a way that the structure will improve the mobility of electron further and as the mobility of electron is increased further thus higher switching speed of the transistor is obtained and thus these transistors will be very much suitable to be utilized in microwave application right so how this uh, high electron mobility or the improved mobility of electron is achieved this can be achieved by creating potential well of lightly doped semiconductor material as shown in the construction below so let us see how the construction is shown over here so this is a typical construction diagram of high electron mobility transistor right so we have a three terminal over here the source the gate and drain right so it basically starts with semi insulating gallium arsenide structure at the base material right over which we have the undoped gallium arsenide slab and over that we have a third layer which is constructed with again undoped aluminum gallium arsenide right and the region above where we are going to connect the electrodes to the structure they are made up of n type so definitely here the majority charge carrier will be electrons okay so this n type semiconductor material is constructed with a combination of aluminum and gallium arsenide okay and the above the metallic junctions ohmic junctions can be formed at that we have a layer of only gallium arsenide so this is a typical construction of cross section view of how the structure of high electron mobility transistor look like right so here we clearly see that when it is properly biased as usual the way in which we bias a normal field effect transistor by applying a voltage which is applied between gate to source right we can control the drain current okay so an input voltage signal which we need to apply between the source and gate and accordingly the drain current will start flowing through the drain terminal by a forming a channel right into the region so this particular dotted valley like structure it is showing that the channel is getting created okay and as on when the channel is getting created this particular region will remain depleted off okay so let us see how it works the traveling in undoped material physically separated from the donor ions so that the impurity scattering gets reduced and hence the mobility is increased so this is the principle of working how the high electron mobility transistors are going to receive or going to achieve the high velocity of electrons so we will read out this particular sentence again see here this is a very important statement and this explains the principle of working of high electron mobility transistor the traveling of charge carriers in undoped material right see here everything over here that is undoped so starting with the base material over here so this is the undoped region and this is also the undoped region so in the undoped region that means a pure semiconductor a physically separated from the donor ions so that the impurity scattering will get reduced and hence the mobility is increased right so even if uh, here we are using the n type of semiconductor right and this particular n type semiconductor is a doped region so here the doped regions are over here so that i will indicate with some other color okay so the doped region i will show with uh, let us say this color okay so the doped region are this one this region and this region are doped okay 
the arrow which I have shown over here, the contacts of source terminal and the contact of drain terminal, they are doped terminals, right? And these are doped with N plus impurity, okay? And this doping is performed in a pure semiconductor slab of aluminum gallium arsenide, which is undoped region. So, actually, this is the undoped region, which I will show with a different color again. Let us say with uh, this particular black color, I will show. So, this particular region here, it is undoped. Okay. So, this is undoped region, right? So, please remember here, what is the principle of operation is that this particular region, which I shown with a gray line. So, this region is actually the undoped region, pure semiconductor region, right? While the contacts which is made with a source and with a drain into this undoped region, they are doped with N plus impurity. So, the majority charge carrier here will be the electrons, right? So, as the traveling path of these electrons, when we bias the field effect transistor by applying appropriate voltage between the gate and source, what will happen? The electrons will get emitted from the source, right? And the electrons will start traveling towards the drain, forming a channel in the region which is undoped, right? So, as the region is undoped, whenever the electrons will start propagating from the source to drain, forming a current, drain current we call it as, these electrons will pass out and they will form a channel over here, right? So, whenever they are passing through this particular channel, okay, so the channel is, the width of the channel is again controlled by applying the gate voltage proportionally, right? So, this is a particular channel to which the electrons will start traveling in this way, right? So, this is right now the channel width. So, here I will show the arrow direction in which the electrons will flow. Electrons will start from the source, okay? So, they will leave the source when we apply proper gate voltage so that the gate voltage will control the width of the channel, okay? So, you can find out here the depletion region width and the channel width is formed. So, the electrons will start propagating through this particular channel. Now, this channel is being developed in the undoped region here, right? So, when the electrons start traveling, in the undoped region, which is purely semiconductor, they will not find any resistance to their velocity. Why? Because when we have the majority charge carrier as an electrons, okay. So, please remember during that time, holes are being also generated in a minor proportion. So, the holes when they start propagating through this particular channel, the velocity of electrons will remain unaffected, right. So, here the same is said over here, the impurity scattering will be reduced. So, here who is the impurity? So, as the majority charge carriers are electrons, right? So, the electrons are supposed to pass from the source to the drain, to this form particular channel, whose width is being controlled by the gate terminal, right? So, during that time, some minority charge carrier will also be present, right? But those minority charge carrier being very less in number and also they are going to propagate in the channel. But as the channel is made up of undoped pure semiconductor material which is made up of aluminum, gallium, arsenide, right? So, the scattering of majority charge carriers that is the electron becomes less because the minority charge carriers are very less and that is why all of the majority of the electrons will find maximum way or maximum path. Please remember here, even if we say that the N plus type doped semiconductor is going to give us the majority charge carrier as an electron, some small amount of holes are also being generated, which we call it as a minority carriers, right? So, these two carriers, they will start propagating and they will contribute to the current. But remember here that as the total number of electrons will surpass the total number of minority charge carrier. They will not find any resistance during their propagation as compared to holes. And that is why the mobility of electron will get improved. And as the mobility is improved, 
the electron will switch fastly from the source to drain and this will result in faster switching operation of the overall device and that's why this particular device is capable to operate at a very high particular frequency ranging in the gigahertz microwave level right so this is the principle of operation because the superior transport properties the majority charge carriers are going to get because they are supposed to propagate through the undoped region through which the channel is formed so this is the principle working why the mobility of electron is getting improved the mobility is getting improved because the majority charge carriers are electrons and these electrons when they get excited from the source terminal they will straight away travel to the drain terminal via a channel formed okay and as this channel is formed in the undoped region they will not be affected by the scattering phenomena because of the minority charge carrier which is normally the present case in all other types of field effect transistor so the construction of this particular device is going to make itself such that the structure will support maximum mobility of the electrons and that's why the transistor is going to operate at a very high speed and thus it is very much suitable for high frequency switching application including microwaves right so as in the case of metal semiconductor field effect transistor free metal electrodes that is the source gate and drain are made to the surface of semiconductor structure which is shown over here right the source and drain contacts are ohmic right so these particular contacts the source terminal and the drain terminal these contacts are made by ohmic contact right so while the drain contact is a short key barrier contact right so the source and drain contacts are ohmic while the gate contact is a short key barrier type the hemt structure is much more complex than simple metal semiconductor field effect transistor this complexity is associated with the fabrication difficulties and thus it will add the cost of the construction of hemt when it is compared to mesfet right the significant improvement in the high frequency performance have been made with this device is a very promising feature right so the construction is a little bit different and it is difficult but with this particular type of a construction using the undoped channel material the electrons mobility is improved and that's why this particular device is able to operate at a very high frequency okay so this is a very promising feature in practice many other type of layered semiconductor structures are often used in the fabrication of microwave and millimeter wave hemt's so the following figure shows a three alternative layered structure it is used in the fabrication of hemt device the structure utilizes additional undoped indium gallium arsenide also okay so sometimes this indium can be replaced with the aluminum also and the same is shown over here the most critical dimension is the gate length so this gate length is a critical factor in the design of hemt device right as it determines the maximum frequency limit which can be obtained with any type of field effect transistor so as we have seen earlier in the case of the other types of transistor that the maximum operating frequency upper frequency limit of the operation of any particular transistor it depends upon the gate width or the gate length okay so again this device is going to be following the same condition so the maximum operating frequency that can be obtained by using this particular device is again limited by its upper frequency limitation which is dependent on the length of the gate right so the gate length is very critical over here so the hemt structure it differs significantly from the mesfet structure in terms of hemt semiconductor layers so here the layers of high electron mobility transistors are different from the construction layer of mesfet right so that's why the structural complexity of hemt device becomes 
a very difficult in order to fabrication process. So that's why the cost of HEMT device is high when it is compared to normal mesh bed devices, right? So for HEMT structure, the thickness of both N type aluminum gallium arsenide and undoped aluminum gallium arsenide spacers are critical in the determination of device behavior. So here, in order to impart the property of high electron mobility values, the undoped region width are very critical factor, right? So altogether, the upper frequency limit is decided by the length or the width of the gate. And similarly, the higher mobility properties can be controlled by controlling the width of the undoped gallium arsenic region, right? So I hope you understood how the high electron mobility transistor is going to differ when it is compared with normal semiconductor field effect transistor that is the example of MESPET, right. So here obviously the switching speed of high electron mobility transistor is superior and greater when it is compared to metal semiconductor field effect transistor, right. Now we go ahead and here we will see the next type of session. So here more or less we have covered all the different types of transistor. We started with a BJT, HBT and we completed MESPET and today we started with HEMT and we completed the constructional working and principle of operation of HEMT. Now let us start with the different types of microwave diodes. Okay? So first of all, let us start with the diodes, semiconductor diodes now. Now all the transistor we have covered. In total in our syllabus, we have the four different types of transistor. Two transistors are BJT type and two transistors are field effect transistor type, right? So the BJT types are normal BJT and another is HE, uh, the, sorry, the HBT, heterojunction bipolar transistor. And the two different types of field effect device that we saw, that is one is a MESPET and another is the HEMT device. Now after this, we will be starting in detail the discussion with the different types of diodes now, right? So one by one, let us go through these diodes now. Now the first type of diode that we are going to see is a crystal diode, okay? So here in our syllabus, we have mentioned. So let us discuss this diode. Crystal diode is also known as point contact diode. Okay, so these are the two alternative names to the same diode. Point contact diodes are also known with the other name as crystal diode. So let us see how this diode is constructed and for what purpose we be utilized for it. Okay, so this is a microwave diode again. Diode is a two terminal device. Okay, a typical silicon crystal diode or point contact diode has the equivalent electrical circuit as shown in the following figure, okay? So first of all, here on the left hand side, whatever we observe, this is a typical construction of a point contact diode, right? So why it is called as a point contact, that will be clear to you when we discuss its construction and principle of operation. So basically, what it consists of the construction this is the left hand side diagram shows you the typical construction of point contact diode. Okay. So it has a two terminals, right? So one terminal is over here, which is shown with a hatching pattern. Okay. And the other electrode is over here. Okay. So one of these electrode will be acting as a cathode and another is a anode, right? So in the construction, what we have is we have a tungsten wire. Okay, so this tungsten wire is very thin and this tungsten wire is pressed in between two terminals. Okay, so the below terminal we make use of a silicon contact and here at the upper terminal the other part is connected to the other remaining terminal of the diode. Okay, and this is a typical construction how the point contact look like. Okay, so let us discuss the theory first and then we will see the working principle and this is how the equivalent circuit of point contact diode look like. So let us go through the working. The diode essentially consists of pointed tungsten wire. Okay. 
So approximate length of this tungsten wire which is used in the construction of diode is around 0.08 millimeter in diameter. Okay. So this tungsten wire is very thin and it is around 0.08 millimeter in diameter and it is made in the form of a coil or a spring. This wire is pressed against the surface of silicon p-type wafer which is approximately 1.6 millimeter square okay and it is suitably doped with the impurities making a rectifying contact right so here the tungsten wire is basically pressed between the two slab of semiconductor silicon right and this semiconductor silicon is suitably doped with impurities okay either p type or n type in order to make this contact as a rectifying contact so here the rectifying contact i will denote over here so this particular part where the tungsten wire is going to touch to the silicon slab on the upper side and similarly here at this contact point these contact points are rectifying contact types please remember right so in a such a way this arrangement is made that the Silicon that a whatever we are going to make use on the upper and below part of this tungsten wire It is doped with suitable impurities in order to form a rectifying contact, right? So here the equivalent circuit diagram is shown over here RS and LS are the series lead resistance and lead inductance. So here the lead resistance and lead inductances are shown over here and these are going to form the series component so ls stands for the value of an inductor which is formed because of this wire contact and rs indicates the resistance of these contacts which is placed in a series right so the next is the capacitance cc is the base capacitance okay so CC is the case capacitance over here and this CC is placed in between two terminal which is de gets developed because of the packaging effect right and finally the capacitance and the resistance CJ and RJ are the effective resistance and capacitance of the junction. So whatever junction it forms over here at the two terminal this junction is represented by a variable capacitor and a variable resistor right so this capacitance and resistance they will form a parallel circuit okay and the lead resistance and lead inductances are connected in parallel with this junction capacitance and resistance and overall the cc indicates the package capacitance so this is the equivalent diagram of point contact diode right so here why the name point contact is given the point contact name is given because this diode is constructed by making use of a very thin tungsten wire which is just pressed on the given semiconductor forming a point like contact right and this particular diode is used to rectification operation of the micro signal right so the typical use of this particular diode is that this particular diode is used to rectify the high frequency signal including our micro. So the contact which is made by using this tungsten wire to this semiconductor slab is of type rectifying contacts. So the name itself indicates that this particular point contact or crystal diode is used for the rectification purpose of very high frequency signal including our micro signal. Right? So the application where we use this particular diode, this diode is used to convert the high frequency signal to a DC equivalent signal okay, in the various application wherever it is needed. So the metallic electrodes are placed on the outer side over here and over here and inside we have such a kind of a structure. So point contact diodes or crystal diodes, they are normally the replacement of normal diodes in the case of low frequency so at a very high frequency whenever we want to make use of a diode as a rectifying element at that time we cannot make use of normal pn junction diode so at that time we need a special type of a diode 
for a rectifying process and that diode is a crystal diode or it is also known as a point contact diode. So here we discuss the typical construction, how the point contact diode looks like and how it particularly works and the typical application and the equivalent circuit diagram, right. So we move ahead to the short key barrier diode now and one by one we will proceed further with the other types of a diode. So we will go ahead with a short key diode, right. So the short key diode are actually based on the principle of short key barrier junction rather than an ohmic junction, okay. So the details we will see in our next part of a discussion which we will take on a tablet and will demonstrate you the construction working principle and application of the remaining diodes. Thank you.